Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install File Server Resource Manager in Server 2019. This is the same process for 2016, 2012. Pretty straightforward really. The reason we're going to be installing this is um, I'm going to show you how to set up file screen filters to block a ransomware attack. So as you know, ransomware attacks the SMB vulnerability in Windows. And most people need it open for net for network shares, things like this. So what we're going to do is just block the saving of file types with certain extensions and alerting the user this has happened and sending an email to the domain admins. Now, in a previous YouTube vid, I showed you how to install and set up SMTP services. So I've done that again and I've set up an alias domain called yourdomain.local. So we're going to configure the SMTP part of this vid to use the SMTP server I set up earlier. So let's install File Services Resource Manager. So let's go to System Manager. You're going to see a few red boxes. It's a brand new install. This is just straight off the bat. So there's no sort of rehearsal in this. So we might get a few bits wrong, but hey ho, no one's perfect. So manage, add roles and features. Next, next, next. And we're looking for file server resource manager. <clears throat> Eventually. Obviously, it depends on how much RAM and what cores you give your VM, but uh, for the purpose of this, we haven't given it a great deal. So, Right, okay, so we're off. So if we, if we expand here and here, and as we scroll down, there we go, we can see File Server Resource Manager, check the box, and Add Features. Then click Next, and Next. Select the box to restart if, if necessary. Yes. And install. I'll just pause the vid until we get to the end near enough. Okay, and as you can see, we didn't need a restart. So let's click close, close server manager, and let's open file server resource manager. So let's go to Windows administrative tools. Here it is, double click. Right, okay, so we need to configure options first. Let's configure the SMTP side of things. So the server I set up earlier is on the same network. So One dot fifty three, and the administrator's address for a demo, of course, is administrator at your domain dot local. Obviously, your domain would be your company domain. Now, the default from address needs to be the same as this part here. So we'll just copy that, paste that in. Okay, we'll send a test email. And yep, success is gone. So that's great. And that's all we need to do for there. You can go through and tweak it, you know, do as much as you want, but that's the basic you need to do to get this running. So click OK. Right now, if we expand these out and you'll see you have file groups. These are all your different file types. You can do all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff with this. We're not interested. We're interested in creating a new group for ransomware. So we're going to create a new group. And if, if you didn't see me, right click, create new file group. And we're going to call it ransomware. And the file type I've come into contact with in the last few months, which has been quite strong and affected quite a few firms, is star.ryk. Now, if you put the star and then a dot, anything it tries to rename is going to pick up on. So click add. 
and click OK. So that's the file group done. Now, you'll see us by here. If you search Google and you find a list of known ransomware types, you can just add as many as you want. So stad.crypt, crypt, sorry, add. You can have um, stad.zzz, which is another one. Okay, so the more you add in here, the better it's going to be. So we're going to click OK anyway. So now you need to create a file screen template. Your file screen template is going to reference your file group. So right click on file screen template and create new. And we're going to call this one ransomware again. And we're going to select the file group we made, which is here. And then we're going to select email message. And we're going to send an email to the administrators. Yep, which is absolutely fine. So you can select a different email. So for the purpose of the test, we'll do which is exactly what the admins is. But while you're setting this up on your domain, you might want to make this personal to you. And we don't want to send the user an email. You can if you want, but if they panic, then you know you don't want that. So let's just get this set. So we've got the settings here. So we've selected the file group ransomware. In there, we've put three random extensions. And the email is going to send an email to the administrator which would be <clears throat> your personal account first while you get it all set up on the domain. After that, you could change to a distribution group, whatever you want. Then we'll go to event log and check the box for send warning to event log. So if somebody is infected or they something tries to save one of those spurious extensions, it's going to pop a message up on their screen, which I'm going to show you. But straight away, instantly, it's going to send an email to whoever you've defined here. Okay. So that's all we need to do for that. So click OK. Yep. <clears throat> file screens. Create file screen. So this is where you select what drives you want to protect. So we want to protect our company shared drive. For the purpose of the demo, I've made an a E drive. And on E drive, we have a company share, which has company shared folders, accounts, HR, etc., etc. So we don't want to block audio and video. What we want to do is select our ransomware group. OK. And create. Yep. So let's take another look at that. Edit file screen. Yep. Active. Do not allow users to save unauthorized files, which will be defined in the ransomware group. OK. And it's going to send an email. And great. It's going to send the event. Marvellous. OK, so that's us pretty much done. So should we see if it works? Let's just close that. So at the moment, we go into here. This is anything on the E drive we selected, mine, not just the share. So if you add a couple of sh uh, drives that are shared or whichever you want to do, I selected the root of E, so it'll do anything. So whether I save to here, in a shared folder, it's it doesn't matter. So if we go to view and show file extensions and hidden items. Now, if I go file, new text document, and we'll just put a bit of text in it. Otherwise, it's not going to work because it doesn't work with absolutely no bytes of data. So save. Now, if I rename this and call it .ryk and press enter. Now, hmm, look at that. Yes, so it's going to become unusable, which is exactly what ransomware does. So we'll click yes, we want to change it. Boom. You need permission to perform this action. This is now wrote an event to the event log. And it's also emailed the administrator. You can try again, try again. It doesn't matter. So if I go in here and in accounts and I do exactly the same thing. Just 
put a bit of text in here so it's got some bytes okay close save and i rename and i think the other one we done was dot zzz so let's try dot zzz zzz do you want to rename it yes again you can't save it so ransomware would no longer be able to save to that drive now this isn't a hundred percent but this is a very very good start and if we go back into our file resource group like i said the more you add in here for the latest ransomware groups the better if you don't need smb shared externally with partners or via vpns what i would recommend is blocking smb on your firewalls so it doesn't allow inbound connections so even if ransomware makes an outbound any inbound is generally comes in on port 445 um, if you get it to drop that action straight away that'll be great and all internal windows client machines windows 7 windows 8.1 windows 10 enable the firewall and block all internal connections i hope you enjoyed the vid don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching